All right, guys, so let's go ahead and open up our tactical arbitrage account. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a reverse search. So essentially a reverse search is kind of just the opposite of a product search. So just to kind of explain in advance, a product search will actually start on a website. So with a product search, you can actually choose a website. So you can choose specific websites that are included with your tactical arbitrage account. So if you can see here, uh, these are all of the websites that are included with tactical arbitrage. So you can choose different websites like GameStop, Giant Tiger, Home Depot, whatever. And so essentially what tactical arbitrage will do is it will run searches on these websites to try to find matching listings. And by matching listings, I mean literally the listing of where you can sell that product. So they're going to try to find the product from GameStop that you can sell on Amazon on an already existing listing. They will literally provide you with the link of where you can buy it and the link of where you can sell it. And so the whole concept with reverse searches is essentially what it does. Instead of searching a website, it's actually going to search the Amazon bestseller listings. So you're kind of doing literally the reverse of a product search. So product search starts with a, a website. It's going to look for products on that website. Whereas with a reverse search, it's starting on the listing. So instead of looking for products, it's going to look for listings and then try to reverse search and try to find different stores that are actually selling that product for cheaper. So that's essentially how it works with a reverse search. So basically you're going to, I mean, obviously you're going to choose what country you're selling in, whether it's amazon.ca to amazon.com, but instead of choosing like a website, you're going to choose scan best sellers. And these are basically scanning the best seller listings that exist already on Amazon. So we're scanning those listings to try to find a certain category. So you're actually searching by category instead of by website. And so for example, if you are somebody that has had a lot of success with electronics, you're gonna specifically choose electronics. You can actually choose multiple ca categories as well. But if you want to do a really like niched down search and specifically choose like electronics, or if you wanna do electronics and let's say home and kitchen, because that's where you've seen the most success, you can choose those two categories. Then you can go to level two and you can actually niche them down even more. So you can choose like headphones, radio communication. So you can choose specific categories within the electronics category. And so my recommendation would be to not don't niche it down too much because then you're just not going to have that many results showing up but for example if ever you see something here that's just too big for example televisions and video a lot of times we wouldn't be able to actually sell a television if you're just starting out like that's going to be way too big but since it says video i would probably keep this uh this one in the search but another example of that is for example if you do automotive let's say you're doing the automotive category and then you you want to niche it down a little bit obviously something like tires and wheels is going to be way too big so what i would recommend to do is select all of them except for the tires one because obviously like it's just going to be so impossible for you to be able to even ship that yourself if you have a prep center one day that's doing it for you go ahead but again it's like you have to make sure that it's actually profitable because a lot of times these large items will cost a lot more to actually have them shipped to amazon a lot of cases it's not worth it so generally you want to stick with light and small items and so this is essentially what you want to do you just want to choose a category you want to choose make sure that it's scanning the bestsellers listings choose specific categories and then press search and that's literally all you have to do to run a reverse search um, it's going to say search in progress search is active in the search manager to confirm that you've done it correctly also some people like to do basic ones i always do advanced searches for both my reverse searches and also for the product searches i just prefer advanced but go ahead and try basic too if you want it's it, it's kind of more simplified so you can kind of just choose the category here it's basically the same thing and so the last thing that i'll show you guys is just like what what filters would you actually set up for this and if you guys watch my first tactical arbitrage video i have a full explanation of all of the filters but essentially what i would recommend to do is make sure that you're capping off the specific category that you chose at the max sales rank for that specific category and so something that you can do it's a really cool feature with tactical arbitrage so if you put the blue button on the other side if you press as per settings it will actually tell you what is the top four percent of each category so for example if we're looking specifically right now at automotive which is like cars and car stuff you can see here that it says 146,000 is the sales rank that you should cap it off at so what i would actually do is i would actually put the blue button back on this side and i would actually cap it off at around 150,000. and essentially what will happen is that in your results you're not going to have any results that have a sales rank above 150,000. and what this will do is just cap it off at products that are just not popular enough because generally any product above top four percent is not going to be selling fast enough for anyone's liking so this is what you should definitely do to make sure that you know you're not getting products that are not popular that's what i would recommend to do per category and then there's a couple other things that you can put as well like remove oversized products because again i don't want to sell products that are too big or too large it's going to be too expensive to ship them if amazon's selling the product that's probably not a good thing either if it's a hazmat product you can remove it there's a couple other things that you can put but also a lot of people will tell me sasha like i've started using tactical arbitrage but i'm not really able to find anything and then i always tell them are you setting up any filters because if you don't put filters 
filters to cap off unpopular products number one you're going to get a bunch of unpopular products in your results and it's going to take you forever to go through those results but number two you have to make sure that there's actually a profit margin and roi between the matching products because if your products don't have a profit margin what's the point in this business so you need to definitely put like if you're going to put any filters you need to put you need to cap it off at a maximum sales rank and then you need to create a profit margin so what i like to do is only keep data if the gross profit is at least around honestly this depends if you're a beginner you can put it as low as two dollars generally what i like to do is around three to five dollars it depends on my mood like if i'm more in the mood for something that has higher profits i'll put five minimum if i'm struggling to find stuff and i want to open up you know my my filters a little bit i'll put it a bit lower um, but for example i pay for a prep center i pay one dollar per unit so generally i like to put my number a bit higher than a beginner would so generally i'll put around four dollars and then only keep data if the gross profit is at least a certain number so i generally like to put around 20 percent. this number will vary though like sometimes i'll put 15% if I want to open up the filters and find more results um, but sometimes if I'm really lazy and I don't want to have to look through a bunch of products that are just not profitable or don't have a high enough ROI for my liking I'll raise it even up to 30% which is on some more rare occasions but generally I would say between 10% to 30% for your ROI filter is a good place to go and yeah that's generally it for the filters if you put too many filters you're going to just restrict how many results you have whereas if you put too little filters you're going to have thousands and thousands and thousands of results that are not even profitable and not even selling and it's like you're going to be wasting all of your time analyzing a bunch of products that are just not good products and so this is generally how you're going to run a reverse search set up your filters and you know find listings first for a specific category and then amazon will essentially go try to find that product for cheaper i'm going to show you guys an example of a search that i ran recently it was a reverse search so if you go to uh, search manager this is where you can view all of your searches and i actually ran this search the other day i believe it was actually in the automotive category so that actually works out well for this example but if you go to view data you can actually see all of the results and so as you can see here instead of me having only canadian tire results or only walmart results because typically with the product searches you're only going to have walmart in your results here i have just a bunch of different stores princess auto best buy canadian tire wayfair a bunch of different stores and so this is essentially how your results will look if you run a reverse search and yeah i believe that's it for this video so i wanted to keep this one kind of short and sweet to show you guys specifically how to run a reverse search because it's something that i did not cover in my first ta video so if you guys have any other recommendations of anything specific for tactical arbitrage that you want to see more of or if you guys feel like you still can't really find any good products with tactical arbitrage please let me know i will try to make more tutorials because i know that this software takes a really long time to kind of get used to sometimes people ask me how long does it take to master tactical arbitrage like literally i would say a good six months <laughs> it's not a software that you're going to use and just understand how to use it overnight it really does take time to kind of get used to how it works and different little tricks and techniques that you can do to actually find good products with this software so yeah that's pretty much it for this video please leave me a thumbs up if you found this video helpful and i will see you guys in the next video